previously on NYPD Blue. I think I know this girl. Human cost of the war on terror starts the 9th of June, only on Mall 4. Previously on NYPD Blue. I think I know this girl. From where? If it's her, she's an auxiliary cop. At our precinct? Head of Peterson's diary. These are guys she was sleeping with, and her subheading says 15. Cops in the 15? Come clean, and we'll look past what a scumbag you were with this girl. But you keep on wasting our time, and it's not us you got a problem with. It's IAB. You know, I, I don't want to get ahead of things, but I always said that if I ever got a second chance, I'd do whatever it took not to screw it up. Angela, I'd be lying if I said I hadn't thought about you, too. But let's go slow. Slow is good. <laughs> All right. Call Solomon. Her place. Parent suicide. Note or anything? No. A neighbor across the way said she'd been depressed lately. Well, do us a favor and bring the neighbor in, all right? <sighs> nice gun. Looks pricey. Suicide? Uh, sure. Wendy Niels. <sighs> Detective Sipwitz. Clark. How well did you know her? Pretty well. You mentioned to one of the officers something about her being down lately. Carla was a, uh, a caseworker for child services, and sometimes it really got to her. Did she say she wanted to kill herself specifically? Uh, more like she didn't feel like waking up sometimes. Did she date anyone you know of? No, she worked all the time. Some nights she wouldn't come home until 5 a.m. I'm sorry. We're going to need her information. No kidding. What, what is it, that time of the month? Yeah, that's it. Is there a problem? No problem at all. Detective, well, go have a bug up your ass somewhere else. Your fault, whatever it is. All right, what the hell is going on here, huh? Is there anybody man enough to say it to our face? Man enough? You guys got some balls. Shannon. Okay. What's the problem? You know damn well what the problem is. I think it's pretty apparent that we don't. All those cops you talked to about sleeping with that auxiliary cop, the ones you promised you wouldn't take it to internal affairs if we came clean to you, each one of us has been notified to report to them. Then come from us. You tell Laughlin to put in his papers or you take it to IAB. Well, guess what, guys? He did retire, and he still got called down there. Why would we notify internal affairs, Shannon, huh? We don't get a medal for that. Then who told him? Jiminy Cricket? Maybe it was one of you guys. No. No way. Next time there's a problem in his command, I'm sure the captain would rather know up front instead of hearing about it from downtown. Maybe you could extend that courtesy to him. We didn't go to internal affairs. Start looking somewhere else, because it wasn't us. Rats. You're wrong on this. Supervisor at Child Services is on her way up. Who the hell would have notified IAB? That's probably one of the cops trying to get in front of him and work a deal. Now, in that case, uh, keep an eye out for whoever doesn't take a hit. He's your boy. I hope they find somebody quick, because as long as they think it's us, they're going to keep making our life miserable. And there's a limit to how much of it I'll take. Marie Burgess? Detective McDowell. Uh, we spoke on the phone. Hi. These are all the files on the removals Carla did? These are all the files on a guy named Kelly Coles, a real son of a bitch. He threatened her numerous times. I will take him. Carla's neighbor said she'd been depressed lately. That valid as far as you know? She took some cases pretty hard, but yesterday was a good day. Carla reunited a mother and daughter. She was really happy. You think it was a suicide? It's an avenue we're exploring. Where are the rest of the files? There's ten more boxes downstairs. The officer said you could come down and get them. We appreciate the help, Miss Burgess. You know, a lot of caseworkers get detached after a while to protect themselves. But Carla, she, she cared. No, she never stopped caring. 
I can't believe she'd take her own life. Well, we're going to do everything we can to find out what happened. Come get the boxes. They're going to start playing games downstairs now? I want it affects our ability to do the job, then I'll get involved. Meantime, get the files. Any removals, any confrontations, prioritize. Start getting these parents in. May I help you, ma'am? Uh, Detective Sipowitz? Yeah, right here. Oh, hi. I I'm Ruth Dwyer. Paul Dwyer's wife, we, we met a long time ago. Oh, sure. <clears throat> How are you? Could we talk in the coffee room? Yeah, sure. Please. Whew. It's been a long time. You'll have to forgive me. I, uh, I haven't had my coffee yet. How do we know each other again? Paul used to work here at the 15th. He retired right after you made detective. Oh, okay, now I got it, yeah. You were at his retirement racket. Absolutely, I apologize. Yeah. How's Paul doing? He passed away last week. I'm sorry to hear that. I haven't been in the 15th in 20 years. Long time. This was his home away from home. I know the feeling. So, uh, Ruth, is there anything in particular then? Paul's last wish. Actually, it wasn't his last wish. He's been telling me that this is what he wanted for a long time. Was to have half his ashes buried here at the 15th squad. Either kept in a cabinet or, or buried under a tile. Anything along those lines. He told me to talk to you. He liked you. The other half? On our mantle. Sure. 20 years he was away from this job, but he still talked about it every day. They were his best memories. Well, uh, Ruth, I'm going to have to clear this with my boss. I mean, I think it's a great idea, but who knows what he's going to say. Okay. Oh, I'm going to be staying in town with my sister for a few days. Uh, I'll call you as soon as I hear. Uh, do you want me to leave him here? No, you take him with you for safekeeping. Thank you. This will mean so much to him. Well, we're, we're not out of the woods yet. I still got to clear it with the boss, but I'm going to do everything I can. What was that all about? Respect for the dead, that's, that's a big Latin thing, right? What's going on? This lady's husband died last week. He had a lot of years at a job, you know, most of them here at the 15th. I guess they moved up to Nyack. Andy. He wanted half his ashes kept there in the squad. You're serious? Yeah. I told her I was going to have to clear it with you first. His ashes? That's not going to happen. Come on, Lou, what's the problem? I mean, uh, you know, we have her over, order a pizza, and then when she leaves, we uh, stick the urn in the back of a file cabinet. No big deal. Yeah, next thing is some old desk office is gonna want to be stuffed and mounted. Forget it. It was his last dying wish. Oh, yeah. Go ahead and lay that on me. Okay, so what, I, uh, I tell her no? <sighs> what kind of detective was he? Uh, I, uh, I don't remember him that much, you know. I think Gibson knew him a little, though. I'll check with him. Yeah, he's on a job, his dying wish. All right, I'll run it by building maintenance, okay? We'll, we'll let them call it. Yeah. <clears throat> Kelly Coles. That's me. You generated a fair bit of paperwork for child services. Was uh, Carla Solomon your caseworker? Yeah. And what was your experience with her? I'm sure you got a pretty good idea. Well, this is her version. What's yours? She got a little obsessed with my family. Kept sticking her nose in it. Because she had nothing better to do? Ask her. And you don't think it had anything to do with your son showing up with a broken nose? Your daughter admitted to the emergency room with second-degree burns? Neighbors calling the cops on you 15 times because they heard screaming and hitting? Your other daughter telling the school counselor you held her head underwater for breaking a plate? Why am I here? When Miss Solomon finally had your kids removed, did you threaten her? I don't make threats. I'll kill you, bitch. Oh, that doesn't qualify. Why am I here? Are you a hunter? Yeah. Another reason your children were removed was because there were guns and ammunition in the apartment that weren't locked up. Yeah, and they're locked up now. I've complied. Did you stop by Miss Solomon's apartment last night? No, I don't even know where she lives. What the hell's going on here? We found Miss Solomon's body this morning. Wasn't me, fellas. Where were you last night? At work. Then I stopped for a few drinks. Then I went home. Who can verify that? My wife and kids. Ask them. You regained custody of your children? Yeah. 
Neither you let me leave or I'm calling a lawyer. Andrew Taylor, he'd like a moment of your time regarding Angela Lugo. Sure, Senator. Hi, Andrew Taylor. Tony Rodriguez, come in. I'm Angela's ex-husband, as of six months ago. Yeah, I know. So she told you about me? Obviously. Mutual friends said she'd been seeing you again. So you're here to... Actually, something came up in our divorce proceeding, and being a police officer, I was hoping you could talk to her and convince her it's best to stay out of court. Wouldn't this be something for your attorneys? We're past that. She took a car that wasn't hers, a BMW. It's supposed to be at my house in Connecticut, but it's not. And if she doesn't return it, or if she sold it, there's going to be legal action. Oh, sounds to me like something better handled by your attorneys. Tony, if she sold the car for money to buy coke, I don't think she's going to want it on court record. What did you say? She has a drug problem. She sold a lot of my things to pay for it, and I'm done dealing with this. You sure you hear about a car, not the bad mouth a woman who dumped you? I wish her the greatest happiness. I hope she gets clean. Yeah, well, she is clean. Then I just want my car back. All right, I appreciate you stopping by. Don't, don't come back here again. Listen, man to man, save yourself a lot of trouble. Did you hear me? Have a seat, Anne. Uh, Carla Solomon, was your case working? Yeah. What was your relationship like with her? Why? Just answer the question. It's okay. Any beefs? She took my daughter away. Did you make any threats to her? No. I couldn't care for my daughter, right? Carla did what she had to do. Going through your file, Anne, we can see you've had some tough times. We don't want to make things harder for you, but we will if you don't tell us the truth. I am. Carla has in her report that you said you hated her and hoped she got AIDS. I couldn't care for my daughter. I, I understood that, and I cooperated with the removal. The only thing I asked is that Carla not tell my mom that me and my baby were HIV positive. She said she wouldn't. But she went ahead and did. Because your mom had to care for your daughter, she needed to know. Carla could have arranged for someone else to take care of Amanda, but she gave her to my mom, and now my family doesn't speak to me. And when my mom found out we had HIV, she gave Amanda up anyway, just like I told Carla she would. It ruined my life even more. So you threatened her? I said the thing about her getting AIDS so she could know what I go through. Where were you last night? Out. Turning tricks. No, I stopped all that a long time back. Oh, he got popped for it three months ago. That's when I stopped. We need to know where you were, Anne. Why? Carla Solomon was found dead this morning. You need to prove you didn't do it or talk about it if you did. Um, I was out on Canal Street. Can anybody verify that? I don't get their phone numbers. <sighs> Write down where you were. Anne. You can't be turning tricks. HIV positive. We find you out there again, you'll go away for it. Yeah, I know. Look up. Unexplained fracture. Nothing unexplained about it. He fell out of his high chair. But the doctor said the injury was inconsistent with your account. He's a fool. He probably looked at Jason for a minute, scribbled off some notes, and walked away. Then what was your problem with Carla Solomon? She says in her notes that she believed you. That's what she said to my face, anyway. That's what she wrote in her reports. That's what she told her supervisor. If she had believed me, if she meant it, she could have stopped them from taking my son. A doctor's diagnosis overrules a caseworker's opinion. She could have stopped it. I know it. So you were angry with her? She took my son away from us. We missed out on half his life because we were accused of beating him and breaking his leg. And they just now figured out he's got brittle bone disease and we still only get to see him once a week while they finish the paperwork. you damn right I was angry at her. When's the last time you've seen her? During the last visit with Jason. You ever been to her apartment? Hell no. Why? Where were you last night? What the hell is this about? We found Miss Solomon's body this morning. You're kidding. Where were you last night? You think I did? But I'm not going to ask you again, Alan. I was home. The whole time? No, I went to work to get my address book. I was gone maybe an hour. Does your work have an entry card system to prove you were there? Listen to me. I did not kill that woman. Write down where you've been, who you've been with the last 24 hours. Maybe I need to get a lawyer here. Now, why would you want a lawyer, Alan? The system ain't railroaded me again. No way. Now, I'll account for my day and answer any other questions, but I'm going to have a lawyer sitting right by me while I do it. A lawyer comes in, the deal goes out. Deal for what? The killing Miss Solomon. <gasps> well, you guys are... I did not kill her. Are you sure talking us into it? Account for your whereabouts yesterday, Mr. Ward. Mom here taped oven mitts to her son's hands to stop him from masturbating at night. Get a load of this one. The kid was removed? Yeah. You know, if this was a suicide, can we find out sooner rather than later so we don't have to deal with this anymore? I'm still waiting to hear. This guy, Mike Mendez, that we've been looking to talk to, he said he was going to call us back. He won't pick up now. Let's go get him. 
Talk to building maintenance. No go on having the ashes kept here. Health code violation. Oh, come on. There's, there's like 50 violations inside of Metaboy's desk alone. I said it's got to be kept outside. No, he specifically requested to be here inside the squad. Okay, say we store it in the back of a file cabinet. What happens in 10 years when we're not here and they haven't cleaned out? Yeah. Let's go. Oh, here they are. Backstabbing the corporate. I'm here to clean up my locker, happy? Yeah, you're the one banging that 17-year-old, not us. Yeah, and you were the one that said you wouldn't notify I ADB. You know, I might be making you feel better believing it was us who did this to you, but it ain't the case. I could have stayed on the job. I could have took my chances with them, and now it's too late. You guys really screwed me. You're heading for another ass-kicking offline, I swear to God. You're gonna tell my wife next, huh? Listen to me. I'd be pissed, too. I'd be good and pissed. And if I found out who gave me up, I'd lay into him. But that ain't us. We didn't do it. We got no reason to. We got nothing to gain from it. Bullshit. Then go ahead and believe it. All of you can. But you get in our face again or make another comment, we're taking this outside. Did you ever threaten Miss Solomon? I recall uttering some epithets. Along the lines of hoping she'd get hit by a bus? Well, sounds like you know this already. Why the questions? It's trying to catch me in a lie? You've continued to call Miss Solomon after your son was removed. My wounds haven't healed, as I'd hoped you'd be able to empathize with. So you blame her for removing your son? She's responsible for removing my son. You weren't at fault? Not at all. Putting a condom on your own erection in front of your 13-year-old son. I was teaching him about safe sex. Masturbating in front of him. Taking nude photos of him. I take it you disapprove of our attitude towards healthy sexuality. I'm just trying to figure out how you ended up blaming Miss Solomon for all this. She, along with a school counselor who badgered Jeffrey until he told her what she wanted to hear, forced themselves into our life, our home, which was an open and honest and healthy one, despite what you or she or anyone else may think. Why'd you let your parental rights get terminated? Report says that was your decision by not attending court-ordered therapy sessions. I wasn't wrong. I'm not going to lie and say that I was. Where were you last night, Mr. Webb? I finished work and I went home. Where do you work? I teach English as a second language at the Lawrence Center for Learning. Are you curious at all as to why we had you come here? Oh, of course. I haven't asked because I believe people should mind their own business. Carlos Solomon was killed last night. What do you know about it? Nothing. That's funny, her getting killed? Oh, I didn't do it. But it's certainly ironic, because this is karma coming back to Ms. Solomon, the irrepressible hands of karma. Because within the ethical realm, every volitional action... You know what, Rich? We've had it with you. Just write down where you were last night and get the hell out of here while we check your alibi. Certainly. Bear. Where were you last night, Mike? Let me think, um... I left work, went home. A buddy of mine was putting a new radiator in his car, needed my help, so I went over there. His name? Joe Malone. Help confirm that? Sure. So you went straight to Joe's and straight back home? Oh, actually, I stopped for a beer after I left Joe's. Where? Bought a six pack. Went down by the waterfront, drank a couple. Who can confirm you were there? I guess nobody. I guess you guys are gonna have to take my word, right? No offense, Mike, but we tend not to take the word of guys who have molested their eight year old stepdaughters. I don't think it was a big misunderstanding, right? No, it wasn't. We read the reports. The caseworkers, the teachers, they all believed her. The fact that DA didn't file criminal charges because your stepdaughter wasn't swearable, that doesn't make any difference in this room. So don't put on a big sidewalk act how you didn't do it, because that's just going to piss us off even more. Now, we're going to need you to account for where you were last night. Yeah, I drank a couple beers in my car by the river. It was there like 20 minutes. Then I went home. You can ask my wife. Your wife who sided with you over her own daughter? Your wife will let child services take her away. We don't give a whole lot of credibility to her either. What the hell is this? What do you guys want, man? A caseworker who had you locked up and took your stepdaughter away? She got killed last night. I'm gonna tell you right now, if something went wrong, now's the time, the only time that we're gonna listen to what happened and give you some help. I didn't do it. This is your only chance, Mike. I'm telling you, I didn't do it. Your word doesn't mean dick. You need to prove where you were every minute last night. Some of these parents should be hung by their toes on 6th Avenue. I don't even want to know what's become of their kids. Anything from your guy? Writing down his whereabouts, we'll check him out. You guys find any candidates? Everybody. We're only a quarter way through. Hey, what do we know about the deal with his personal life? Uh, worked all the time. No man in her life. Went out salsa dancing any night she had free. Last night? No. Hello, Andy? Oh, hey. Hi, Ruth. Uh, any word yet? <clears throat> yeah. Um, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to keep Paul here. You spoke to your boss? Uh, that's me, man. And, uh, we looked at all possible scenarios, but we just can't do it. You know, I was thinking, Ruth, maybe we could spread Paul's ashes out at the fire and range, you know, get the pipe band, make a nice little ceremony out of it. No, he wouldn't want that. I'm sorry. We really tried everything we could. I should be going.
have a seat, Miss Monroe. First, say why you drag me out of work. Sit down and we'll talk about it. My boss looking on. What you think go through his mind? He see you taking me out. Sit down. Ella Monroe, she's trouble. Somebody like that work in the register? Sit down or we'll toss you in the cage. Let you spend the rest of the afternoon cooling off. Account for yourself the past 24 hours. At Monty's camera, open to close. The seat up time to the fluff and fold for the lay shift, and then home to sleep. And that's every day, okay? I'm providing for my kids. Carla Solomon was your caseworker? Yeah, why? She removed your children? Yeah. She said my oldest couldn't take care of my youngest after school. Your oldest who's 10? She's a mature 10. She was taking care of a two-year-old. When I was on public assistance, I was there taking care of them. But then I got kicked off and had to find a job, which I do two of them. But now I'm a bad mom because my kids are alone after school. What do you people want from me? Now I can't even take When did you see Miss Solomon? Excuse me? Did I interrupt you while you were talking? Now my kids are fine on their own. But then the bitch down the hall called child services on me and they come and take my kids. Yeah, we know the events. We've read the report. Okay, so now I get them back, right? And I have my mom watch them after school. But one day she's sick and the bitch neighbor called child services again. Ella, did you hit Miss Solomon when your kids were removed the last time? Hit? It was more like a shove. And she didn't press charges because she knew her ass deserved it. When did you see her last? The last time she came and took my kids away again. But they in foster care now, seeing weekends. And I'm gonna get them back too, because ain't nobody breaking my family up. Well, we found Miss Solomon dead in her apartment this morning. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that. I didn't like her and all, but I'm sorry to hear that. Well, where were you last night? <laughs> Wait, get the. Wait, you, you thinking that I can't. Get the hell out of my face with that killer somebody. You crazy? Sit down and spell out where you've been the last 24 hours. I ain't doing a damn thing. Write down where you've been or get locked up. Shh. I'm killing that woman. And throwing my life away, please. Thanks. Emmy came back. No suicide. All right. All right. Appreciate it. ATF got a hit on the murder weapon. It's from a batch of 50 that got stolen out of JFK. Another one of the 50 was bought by an informant from this bartender over in the East Village. They're trying to set up a buy with an undercover to build a better case, but they said go ahead and pull the bartender in. Here. What's up? Every cop downstairs thinks we notified you on that case last week. Rumors fly sometimes. But you gotta let them know that it didn't come from the squad. We'll take the grief over the things we do, but we didn't do this. You know, you guys should be counting your lucky stars. We didn't come down on you. You knew about cops sleeping with a 17-year-old auxiliary cop, and you sat on that? Their job was to clear the homicide, which they did, and it was unrelated to those bonehead cops banging that girl on the side. You really need an explanation as to why we didn't turn the cops over to you, Martens. Are you gonna take a hit? Some of them. And for what it's worth, I'll let them know it didn't come from you guys. Who flipped? One of the cops? Come on. I very much want to get my daughter back. We understand, but that's not our department. We just need to know where you were last night. I don't know why Miss Solomon hated me. I don't know why she had it out for me, but she did. And she took my daughter, and I'm still waiting for a reason why. Well, apparently for refusing treatment for being bipolar and uh, self-medicating with heroin. <laughs> heroin? Ha. Oh, that's a good one. Ms. McDermott. All I want is to have my daughter back. Now, if you could please get me a meeting with the mayor. Ms. McDermott, where were you last night? That's all we need to know. I want to know where my daughter is. I am the only one that can take care of her. Yet, on January 3rd, 2002, Carla Solomon at 8.15 in the morning. Carrie, night. where were you last night? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's just that she's my baby. My life. And who knows where she is right now. I'm sorry. It's okay. Just tell us where you were last night. My mom's house. She was there? Yeah. Okay. All right, you can leave now, Carrie. Thanks for your help. Please help me get my daughter back. You can't. If I could just talk to the mayor. We're sorry. Well, screw you. You can go to hell, both of you. Ma'am, you need to leave now. Wait, do you feel like you're going to hurt yourself right now, Carrie? Because if so, we could take you to a hospital. You don't give a damn. Sit down. All right, we got good news and we got some bad news, Tony. The bad news is ATF has a buy into you for a gun that was one of 50 that got stolen out of JFK. The good news is we got a homicide off a gun that came from that same batch. Now, what you're going to do, because you're a bright guy, you're going to tell us who you sold your guns to and where the rest of them are. That's going to buy you a lot of rhythm. I sell drinks, guys, not guns. Tony, we know you sell guns. ATF has it on tape. Well, let me see this tape. You think we just uh, picked you random out of 8 million people? You're outsmarting yourself into federal time, Tony. I know your guys act, claiming things you don't have, witnesses that don't exist. You got a tape, show it to me. 
All right, listen to me, you dumb guinea. We're gonna get search warrants for your house, your car, your bar, anything with your name on it. And we're gonna find those extra guns. And when we do, you're gonna do time on every one of them unless you start talking right now. Show me the tape, then maybe we'll talk. All right. All right, Tony. I see by looking at you, you're pretty dug in. You got a lot of pride, you don't want to admit you were wrong. So here's what we're gonna do. Me and my partner are gonna walk out of the room, all right? You're gonna take a deep breath. We're gonna walk back in the room, that's a whole new day. Okay. How's it going, Tony? Take back the dumb guinea comment. Done. Go on. I didn't steal those guns out of JFK. We don't care where you got them. I've only sold two. The most recent. Last week to this weirdo. I wouldn't have, but this guy I know vouched for him. Anybody in here? I knew I shouldn't have sold it to that idiot. Where are those other guns? Storage locker in Jersey City. Yeah, that guy, that's the idiot. All right, sit tight. Look here. Hey. Hey, Andy. Gibson. Hey, kid. Eddie. You called me? Oh, yeah, uh, forget it. We got it worked out. What was it? Hey, look, Josh, do me a favor. Get this guy's statement in the book. You put him in a cell downstairs. Uh, no problem. This old hair bag detective worked at the 15th, died recently. He wanted half his ashes buried here. We can't do it. You're kidding. Who's the guy? Paul Dwyer. Paul Dwyer? Moved to Nyack? His wife's name Ruth? You know? He saved my life. Oh, come on. You gotta do right by the guy. Leave me out of this. I told Ruth we could spread his ashes at the firing range. She didn't seem to receptive. The firing range? He almost lost his eye out there off some way with shrapnel. Aye, aye, aye. I'm serious. It's not my call, Eddie. I respond to a domestic dispute. The whole building's related. Pretty soon there's 30 of them, they turn on me. I get knocked in the back of the head. My gun skids across the street. My radio's in the car. I'm dead and Kelsey's nuts. Then out of nowhere, here comes Paul Dwyer. Cracking heads, throwing shots in the air. Paul was no shrinking violent. Didn't take much for him to start throwing punches. This time, it happened to be an appropriate situation. We got a case we're working here, Eddie. You gotta do right by the guy, Andy. We got a case, Gibson. The guy saved my life. I couldn't be more sympathetic. Sit down. You ever been to a bar called the Chatterbox, Rich? I don't drink. That wasn't the question. I have not been to a bar called the Chatterbox. You know a guy named Tony Gabrielli? No. He knows you. You bought a gun off him last week. That same gun was found next to Carla Solomon this morning. We know why you killed her. She had the gall to take your son from your happy home. We want to know how you found her, how it went down. That's a lot of assumptions. You want to live, Rich, do you? Hmm? You're nutty enough to do time, you'll find a way. But you either get to it and you tell us what happened or we're gonna push for the death penalty. You can't fantasize about teaching your kid how to jerk off when you're dead. I don't like you. I'm not gonna pretend otherwise. I'm just letting you know what your options are. Now, you obviously consider yourself smarter than everybody else, so you figure it out. Am I smarter than everybody else? I suppose in certain instances I am. Like teaching your kid about sex? What people don't understand is you have to command your sexuality or your sexuality will command you. So you enjoy teaching your kid these theories? Oh, no, no, no. That's what the DA was trying to imply. I derived no sexual gratification from it. I was merely trying to save him for what I went through as a child. I grew up in a very repressed and secretive and abusive family. I wanted to spare Jeffrey from that. Now, this could work for you, Rich. Context. Here I am, saving his life, and Carla Solomon comes in and ruins it. How'd you find out where she lived? Saw her in a market. Followed her home. Last night? Two months ago. Give it a lot of thought. You waited outside her apartment, followed her in? Yes, I did. I asked her where my son was, she didn't know. I asked her to get him on the phone, she couldn't. And that's all there really is to talk about, gentlemen. You were going on about karma to the other detectives, you believe in it? I do. What did you think you were going to get in return then, after killing somebody? Last night had nothing to do with me. Miss Solomon is dead because of her own actions. I was merely the vessel that facilitated her karma. I don't expect you to understand. Good. Kelly 
Nick Coles moved out of their district, so he got a new caseworker and judge. He fell through the cracks. He moved. New people signed him, didn't read his reports? They did, but I spoke with his most recent judge in family court, and she told me this guy went to therapy, anger management, parenting skills class. He locked up his guns. He met all the criteria. Look, he broke his son's nose, burned his daughter, held his other daughter's head underwater. I mean, he admitted to all this. Judges want to keep families together. That's insane. I asked if they keep an eye on him. They said they would. This guy has no business being around kids, let alone raising them. You want the judge's number? Thanks for looking into it, Val. We appreciate it. Sorry, you guys. I need a beer. What two? Count me in. I gotta get back home. Doing all the good work today. Yeah. Great. You done writing it up? Yeah. Come on, we're heading out for a beer. Uh, I can't. Thanks, so. All right, you guys. I'll call you later. <clears throat> I'll get him to central booking. Good night, Detective. Good night, Jack. May I help you? Yeah. Just to let you know, I'll be doing some work in the bathroom now. It's gonna get a little noisy. I I'll put an out-of-service sign on the door. Thanks. Should be a couple of hours. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, what kind of work are you doing? Fixing a pipe. It's leaking downstairs. And that would entail what? Digging the floor up? Usually, yeah. So you're actually gonna be digging up part of the floor to get to the pipe? Yeah. And covering it with what? Cement. It's a sign from God, truly. I catch you guys at a bad time. No, do it. Go ahead, start digging. I'll take care of you. Good, though, yeah. <clears throat> Thanks. You're five minutes late. I got caught up. You don't let it happen again. No. I won't. You want something to drink? I'm all right. What's up? Among other things, your ex-husband stopped by my office this morning. Andrew? What did he want? Said you took a car of his. Oh. Wanted to keep it out of court. Oh, that son of a bitch. Yeah, it wasn't too pleasant. Well, it's not his car, and he's got a lot of nerve going to you about it. Are you using him? Is that what he said? No, I'm asking. Are you using <sighs> Went out, bought something sexy, something I thought you'd like, and this is what I get? Answer the question or I'm walking out the door. No, I'm not using. Because I can't do that again. Tony? I won't do it. I'm clean, nine months. Andrew's saying different. Andrew is a self-centered workaholic asshole who didn't know I existed the entire last year of our marriage. Did you do rehab? I did rehab. I do follow-up. I'm in counseling. I'm clean. You want to test me? No. Then you're going to have to take my word for it. But I don't need you looking over my shoulder or second-guessing me. So trust that I'm clean and stick around or don't and leave. Because that's something I won't do again. I've worked hard, Tony. I need you to trust that. I do. I got worried. Believe in me. I will. I liked you better before. You, John? Yeah. How's it going? Not too bad. If this is about me having a few drinks, I have to work like everybody else in this country. Some cops at work. Today I got pulled down to internal affairs. Yeah? Yeah. Off that auxiliary cop case from last week. They accuse the squad of notifying IB. Cops get jammed up, always do that. Never want to take responsibility. Dad, you're the only person I told that story to. So what's the implication, John? Actually, I know what the implication is. I told you before. Things aren't adding up, Dad. You have to tell me what's going on. <sighs> tell me what is going on. Nothing. Look at me. Look at me. Look me in the eye. Did IAB flip you? When you were in that jam, you have to tell me, Dad. Are you working something off for internal affairs? Tell me! They said they were going to go after my pension. They were going to put you back in the uniform. I had no choice. They said they were going to ruin you, John. You should have stood up. You should have fought it. They had me so turned around. This thing, what's the cops in your precinct? What's the first thing I gave them? I had to give them something, John. Dad, what were you doing? 
What the hell are we gonna do now? You're sure? I'm positive. Because once it goes in... This is what he wanted. To be part of the 15th forever. All right, then. Uh, may I? All you, ma'am. We owe a lot to this place. Being a detective made him so proud. I was proud when I told people what he did. Oh, we didn't have a, a big fancy life or anything. But the money he made here gave us a comfortable living. We put our daughter through school and the pension kept us safe after he retired. And he made so many friends. Lifelong friends. Real friends. People who would be there for you no matter what. Oh. We owe a lot to this place. The New York PD is back again on Monday at 10 past midnight. But first, we're still in the States with Jon Stewart and The Daily Show.